Section 2.1, Using Inductive Reasoning. The best way to talk about using inductive reasoning is to jump straight into an example. In example 1, we have a series of numbers. Negative 7, negative 21, negative 63, negative 189. Describe the pattern in the numbers that you see, and then try to write the next three terms in the series. Pause this video if you need to, and then resume once you think you have the pattern in the next three numbers. Okay, writing these out, we see to get from negative 7 to negative 21, we could either subtract 14, or we could multiply by 3. There are other options too, but these seem like the two most common that we see, especially in math classes. So we look at the next term, negative 63. To get to negative 63, we could either subtract by 42 or multiply by 3. Okay, right now the multiply by 3 happens in both. So let's look at the next number, negative 189. We see here we could also multiply by 3. So multiply by 3 appears to be the appropriate pattern. However, there's no way for us to know this for sure. That's why what we come up with is called a conjecture. Let's scroll down to this vocabulary term. A conjecture is an unproven statement. It's what we think is occurring, but there's no way to prove beyond any doubt, beyond any questions, that what is happening is that we're actually multiplying by 3. It's only what appears to be happening. And the process of seeing that pattern and making co conjecture is what we call inductive reasoning. If you think about it, uh, if any of you have read Sherlock Holmes or watched the movies, Sherlock Holmes actually uses inductive reasoning, not deductive, because he sees patterns, he sees clues, and pieces together what he thinks happens. He never knows for certain. He's never able to prove what happened until someone says, yes, that's what happened. Okay, as for the next three terms, if we multiply by 3 again, we then get negative 567. If we multiply by 3 again, we get negative 1701, and then if we multiply by 3 again from negative 1701, we get negative 5103. So our next three terms are negative 567, negative 1701, and negative 5103. So again, make sure that you fully understand what a conjecture is and what inductive reasoning is. All right, we'll use inductive reasoning again, looking at the pattern we see below in example two. Try to figure out what shape will come next. Pause your video and resume when you're ready to see the solution. Well, what we see is that to the first shape, we add another two hexagons with the dots. And that gets us from one to two. From two to three, we add a row of three hexagons. That gets us from 2 to 3. So from 3 to 4, we should add a row of 4 hexagons. And indeed, we see that that's what happens. Hopefully you came up with that drawing. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to prove conjectures as true or false.